Hi, welcome to Life Science Video Lecture. Today we will be discussing about fungi. We will be discussing about kingdom fungi, which is a kingdom which is mentioned in R. H. Whitaker's classification. You know, we know that five kingdom classification of nineteen sixty nine. This kingdom is mentioned in your biological classification and C. R. T. Plus one text. So we will be discussing about it today. So. first we will be talking about general idea we will be knowing general idea about the fungi what are fungi right the first point says that they are heterotrophic organism what do you mean by heterotrophic organism the organism which acquire nutrition from other organism they are known as heterotrophic organism right so fungi are heterotrophic in nature and some organisms which are autotrophic are plants right which belongs to kingdom plantae so they are heterotrophic in nature which means they occur nutrition from other organism next are next the point is that they are cosmopolitan in nature cosmopolitan in nature means they are found everywhere fungi can be found everywhere so they can be found in air water or soil it means that fungi reproduce by mainly three methods the second method or the one of the method is that they reproduce by vegetative propagation or asexual method right so in asexual method of reproduction they release spores so the spores can be seen in air water soil so that we can say that they are cosmopolitan in nature cosmopolitan means they can be seen everywhere they can be seen everywhere next is that they are see next point says that they are seen in a warm and humid climatic condition they needs a warm and a humid climatic condition warm means not more than exceeding temperature not more than 30 degrees celsius if uh, and below 20 degrees celsius this is the optimum temperature required for the growth of the fungi are there and they can be seen in acidic condition acidic ph they flourish excellently in acidic condition next point says that the thallus of fungi are microscopic thread like filaments which are called as hyphae i have drawn a structure here the structure of mushroom right i i think you know you have seen mushroom so when we analyze this structure we can see certain structures right there are certain thread like structures and there is a stem there is a ring there is there's a lot of parts in the mushroom right but for us with our naked eyes we can only see in, see the upright portion you know this is a substratum substratum means the area where fungi can grow the the uh, where fungi can grow easily that the the part is known as substratum substratum may be soil substratum can be wood substratum can be some animals uh, dung means waste especially some fungi can easily flourish in cow dung right so for uh, so cow dung can be a substratum soil can be a substratum for some fungi rocks can be also a substratum so when we analyze this structure we can find uh, a stem or stalk first of all we 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 if we look at thread like structure here what is this this thread like structure are known as mycelium right mycelium they are known as mycelium the entire part is known as the mycelium so in mycelium each each unit each unit is known as hyphae for example we can say this as a hyphae this is a hyphae this is a hyphae so this point says that uh, 
Thallus of fungi are made up of microscopic thread-like filaments which are known as hyphae. Hyphae cannot be or these thread-like filaments cannot be seen by our naked eyes. So it, it, it should be, uh, there should be a need of any microscopes to visualize this hyphae structure. In case of fungi, we can only, in case of mushrooms, we can only see in this structure, this pore producing entire structure, right? We will be discussing it in detail later about mushrooms. Next, hyphae forms a web-like structure which is known as the mycelium. T, okay, mycelium is a web-like structure. The entire part is known as the mycelium. And what is hyphae? Hyphae is the unit structure, the individual pieces, the individual structures are known as the hyphae. If, if uh, collection of hyphae is known as mycelium, that means hypha. We say it as hypha. Hypha is a plural, plural for hyphae. Next, hyphae shows apical growth. What do you mean by apical growth? If I take a hyphae here, considering a hyphae, microscopic hyphae the hyphae will be growing from this tip this is known as the apical end apical end hyphae will be growing from this end so it is known as the apical so hyphae shows apical growth means hyphae uh, hyphae growth hyphae have a growth from the apical position next is the study of fungi study of fungi is known as mycology myco means myco means fungi logos means to study what is etymology etymology is the study of words right how a words are made how a word changed according to history the study of words are known as etymology if you are studying mycology myco means fungi study means to logos means to study about the fungi these are the basic general idea about fungi next <coughs> is about some points to remember First is that the father of mycology, P. A. Michaeli was known as the father of mycology and father of modern mycology and plant pathology, Hendrich and Deberry. These are the two scientists which were involved in the study of mycology earlier. Uh, Hendrich is known as the father of modern mycology and plant pathology. We know what is modern mycology. And next is about studies in plant pathology. What is plant pathology? Plant pathology means it is the study of, it is the related to branch of biology which deals with the study of pathogenesis in plants. How a pathogen enters, how a pathogen attack, what is the incubation period, everything, how it affect, what are the symptoms, everything the all-round study is known as the plant pathology next is father of indian mycology father of indian mycology and plant pathology is known as his name was butler ej butler ej butler in 1920s he have done his work in pusa institute of in bihar so he was named as named as indian mycologist father of indian mycology and next is about the we earlier mentioned about fungi which possess a heterotrophic nutrition i earlier mentioned what is heterotrophic nutrition so fungi have a different type of heterotrophic nutrition that means how fungi can absorb food in different condition some of the modes of heterotrophic nutrition in fungi are the fungi which can act as an epiphytic fungi what is an epiphytic fungi the fungi can be seen growing on other plants or on other organism these type of fungi are known as epiphytic fungi so a good example of an epiphytic fungi is armillaria is armillaria so armillaria is a good fungi which is seen growing on other plants okay they make a colony so 
ഇൻ ആർമിലേറിയ വാട്ട് ഇസ് എ വാട്ട് വിൽ ബി ദ സബ്സ്ട്രേറ്റം ദ ഫഞ്ചൈ ദ സബ്സ്ട്രേറ്റം ഓഫ് ദ ഫഞ്ചൈ വിൽ ബി ദി പ്ലാൻറ്റ് റൈറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് എ സബ്സ്ട്രേറ്റം സബ്സ്ട്രേറ്റം ഇസ് എ സർഫസ് ഓർ സബ്സ്ട്രേറ്റം ഇസ് എ പ്ലേസ് വെർ ഫഞ്ചൈ ക്യാൻ ഈസിലി ഗെയിൻ ദിയർ നറിഷ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓക്കെ സോ എപ്പിഫൈറ്റിക് ഫഞ്ചൈ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഈസ് എ സിംബയോട്ടിക് ഫഞ്ചൈ വാട്ട് ഈസ് സിംബയോസിസ് symbiosis is a relationship between two organism usually it will be between two organism in symbiotic relationship two organism will be having a, a symbiotic relationship in the sense two organism may be mutually benefited that means in case of symbiotic fungi a good example of a symbiotic fungi is lichen lichen is a organism which is a combination of algae and fungi so good example of lichen good example is lichen lichen is a organism which is a combination of algae and fungi how it is mutually benefited fungi will be seen associated with the algae fungi will absorb or the algae will provide certain uh, shelter to the fungi and fungi will be providing certain nutrients to the algae so they are in a mutually benefited condition another example of mutually benefited association between a fungi and a plant is known as mycorrhiza a good example is mycorrhiza mycorrhiza myco means i earlier mentioned myco means fungi rhiza means root plant root right so it is the association between fungi and the plant root usually the plants are from the higher level means pinus is a good example of uh, pinus uh, when a fungi is associated with an uh, uh, pinus roots it is a good example of mycorrhiza mycorrhiza can also be seen in certain type of orchid plants it is said that the orchid seeds can only be sprout or they can only be germinated when they are associated with fungi so in this type of symbiotic association fungi absorb certain fungi provide a condition in the root rhizosphere right rhizosphere is a area which is associated with the root so fungi provide a condition in which the root can easily absorb the nutrition and uh, and the nutrients and the water from the soil easily and also what does the plant give in return plants usually give in return their photosynthetic product right plants are autotrophic in nature they they take their photo they make their photosynthetic product which are carbohydrates later it is later it is transformed into sucrose right because uh, sucrose later it is converted into starch because sucrose is easily uh, soluble in water so their photosynthetic product fungi is using so they uh, pinus roots give fungi their photosynthetic product next are saprophytic fungi what are saprophytic nutrition saprophytic nutrition is a mode of nutrition in which the organism absorbs their nutrition absorbs their food from dead matter okay a good example of a saprophytic fungi are mushrooms right earlier i have drawn a diagram about mushroom i have mentioned that mushroom have certain thread like structures which are known as the mycelium they this mycelium can absorb the nutrition from dead organic matter right usually mushrooms are seen in soil or they are seen on top of decaying wood so what does these do they do mushrooms are a good decomposers also why they are known as a good decomposers because they can absorb nutrient they they absorb nutrient and they decompose the dead organic matter okay so they are a good saprophytes 
fungi can also act as a saprophyte i also earlier mentioned that mushroom is only a part of a mycelium or mushroom is a part of a mycelium which fungi use to spread their spores for the next generation okay so a good example of a saprophytic fungi are mushrooms please write the here as the example as mushrooms next is about the parasitic fungi what are parasitic fungi what is parasitism what are parasites right parasites are the organism which absorb the nutrients from a living host even though the uh, host is living they are not dead they absorb the nutrient nutri nu nu nutrients so parasitic fungi can be of two types ectoparasitic fungi and endoparasitic fungi what are ectoparasitic fungi the fungi which absorb nutrients and on the from the living host on the top of the top surface of the living organism a good example of parasitic fungi are albigo alternaria albigo alternaria albigo alternaria alternaria okay these are the good examples of the fungi and ecto they are endo fungi endo endophytic fungi what are ectophytic fungi the fungi which can absorb absorb the nutrients from a living organism on the top of the surface they are endoparasitic fungi albigo alternaria etc so why i am writing this example is because in neat examination everything should be clear and everything should be in your memory because in neat examination usually the examples are been asked like examples are been asked and certain terminologies and certain names who was the father of mycology etc etc one of one example is also the fight of thora fight of thora these are the examples okay and these are the examples of endoparasitic fungi and in case of the ectoparasitic fungi this is a example of ectoparasitic fungi it is also known as powdery mildew i will write the name later you just write it as powdery mildew just write endoparasitic fungi these three are important for us so Uh, we have discussed everything i hope you have written it in your paper so next is about the thallus of the fungi what do you mean by thallus thallus is a body structure if we are uh, thallus is we can say thallus is an undifferentiated mass or undifferentiated body when an organism's root stem leaves or any other vegetative or reproductive parts are undifferentiable undifferentiated means we can't uh, classify them or we can't identify them it as it is a root we can't say that it is a root it is a stem or it is a leaf part so if we can't say like that we can we generally conclude them as a thallus in organisms like bryophytes which are a lower plant groups i think you know bryophytes which are also known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom in bryophytes we also use this this term uh, thallus their body structure as thallus so in case of fungi their thallus or their somatic structure what do you mean by somatic structure somatic structure is a structure of an organism in which they are which they are used as for the vegetative purpose vegetative what do you mean by vegetative purpose there is two types of purpose in an organism or parts a vegetative part and a reproductive part an organism reproductive part is only meant for reproducing or it, the that part is used for producing spores or producing gametes for their next generation but in case of vegetative parts they are used for their vegetation for the purpose of vegetation what do you mean by vegetation to occur nourishment and to distribute the acquired food to all parts of their body 
So, in case of fungi, their body is known as thallus or thalli, plural. The fungi's thalli is known as hyphae. In the first uh, part of the lecture, I have told, the, told you about what is hyphae. Hyphae are the unit structures or they are microscopic thread-like filaments which, can, which can't be seen by our naked eyes and they are thread-like structures, they are known as hyphae. When a hyphae is formed or when a group of hyphae are formed, they are known as mycelium or in plural we can say it as mycelia. Okay, so uh, the first two points are written in the board. Second is about the apical growth which is seen in the hyphae. Hyphae shows apical growth. Apical growth is the growth at the tip or the apical region. Apical region means the tip end part. Okay. For example, if this is an organism, apical growth will be from these two sides, right? And these are the apical growth. And if an organism has lateral growth, it will be from both these sides to here. Apical growth from will be from here. So this is the general idea of apical growth and uh, the lateral growth. It is general for every organism. Okay. Next is about the hyphae. I earlier mentioned if we are looking uh, in a fungi, what is this? This diagram is a fungi. This is a fungi in, in which they have their thread-like filaments which is known as the hyphae. A, a group of thread-like filaments or a group of hyphae are known as mycelia, mycelium and a group of mycelium is known as mycelia as it is the plural form of mycelium. Okay. Next is about the differentiation. Okay. It's about the hyphae. Hyphae may be unicellular or multicellular in condition. So what is unicellular hyphae? If a hyphae is unicellular, we should think that the organism will be unicellular. A single cell, con a single cell will be there for the entire organism. A good example of unicellular uh, hyphae or unicellular fungi is yeast. Okay, a common yeast. And next is about the multicellular filamentous fungi a hyphae can be classified according to cellular basis it can be unicellular or multicellular a unicellular fungi or unicellular um, organism are uh, a good example of unicellular organism is yeast and it contains only a single cell next is about the multicellular organism multicellular organism the organism will be having more than one cell more than one cell means it will be like a filament structure. It is a multicellular structure, right? A unicellular structure will be like this. It will be only a unicellular cell. A good example is yeast, a common yeast which is used in bakery products. The scientific name of the yeast which is used in bakery, which is a unicellular fungi, is known as Saccharomyces. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is the common baker baker's yeast, which is a unicellular fungi, which is used in um, bakery products. I think you have seen. Uh, I I think you have touched the yeast, right? I I think you have seen yeast. It is seen in small ball-like structures, which are easily available in our market what is this thing usually if we take a small ball it is a spherical ball it contains many spores of yeast right this yeast actually in industries they they take the yeast and they cover it with a, an alginate form they cover it with sodium alginate or a calcium alginate to form a spherical structure so that the yeast spores yeast spores means the yeast cells inside the uh, the alginate beads can be viable 
but their their uh, their activity is very low their body functioning is very low so if we are uh, putting them into a dough and we are making something or we are making a bakery products like cakes so they the alginate bead become destroyed and they come outside and they become active and they start producing carbon dioxide so this carbon dioxide which is produced during their growth make the bakery products very soft uh, soft in the sense we are used we used to make many items so if we are making cakes so the cakes will be very soft because of the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast will uh, will make the cakes uh, very soft because of the pores produced by the carbon dioxide right so these are the main things to be remembered so hyphae hyphae can be classified on the basis of their cellular level into unicellular hyphae and also multicellular hyphae unicellular hyphae example is yeast the common baker's yeast which we use and there was a, a small mistake when i wrote the scientific name i didn't write an i in the cervicia i will write it once more saccharomyces cerevisiae this was the spelling i forgot to mention an i here the alphabet i so usually if we write a scientific name of an organism because we are writing it by our own hand so we need to mention we need to un we need to underline both the genus name and the species name the genus name should be in the capital letters genus and the species name should be in small letters this should be in mind while we are writing the scientific name of an organism so hyphae can also be classified according to the presence and absence of septa in their hypha i earlier mentioned what is hyphae hyphae they are the unit structure of mycelium what is so hyphae can be classified according to their cellular type hyphae can also be classified according to their um, septal presence and absence of septa what are septa septa are certain cross walls or partition wall which are found in the hypha if you look into this diagram very carefully you can see certain cross walls here the cross walls which divides the cell into two right here is a cross wall here is a cross wall so this mycelium is a septate mycelium septate mycelium or a septate hyphae means there is partition walls in between hyphae so hyphae can be classified on the basis on the absence and presence of septa first one is septate and second one is a septate condition in what do you mean by accepted condition from the terminology we can understand that there is an absence of septa or cross wall in the hyphae so this accepted condition is also known as xenocytic condition what is xenocytic condition xenocytic condition if we look the etymology of this word xeno plus cytic this is the etymology of the word xenocytic means these xenos and cytic xeno means they are both the both the words are from latin greek words which means xeno means common cytic means cell or a box so there is a common box common box in which there is common box there is the absence of a uh, partition wall which means this hyphae is also known accepted hyphae is also known as xenocytic hyphae which means there is no septa there is absence of septa so we know that in an organism in a cell there will be nucleus uh, certain organelles present so if there is absence of septa in between uh, in between the cells all these uh, constituents will be mixed together that means in a cell or a, in a aseptate condition or in a xenocytic condition there will be presence of more than one nuclei in each hyphae 
in a each single hyphae so we can also known as we can also say this condition as a multinucleate condition multinucleate condition means there is presence of more than one nucleus in each hyphae but there is a condition that they may form septa they may form cross walls between the hyphae during reproduction there are some fungi which uh, does this process so some of the examples of the fungi which uh which have the presence of a septate condition are rhizobus albugo and phytophthora these are the three uh, fungal fungal genus which show a septate condition and the condition which the fungi which show septate condition there are large group of fungi but you should remember these three names under a septate condition albugo rhizobus and phytophthora species so these are the three uh, these are the points to be remembered in a septate condition and what is septate condition i also earlier mentioned what is septa so in a condition in in a hyphae where there is a septum in a hyphae where, where, where there is a partition wall so there may be a condition that a cell or a partition can contain single nuclei or a partition may contain dinuclei or partition may contain more than two nuclei so according to the number of nuclei a septa can septate hyphae can also be seen with dikaryotic monokaryotic and multikaryotic organs and multikaryotic cells multikaryotic cells which means presence of more than oh, two nuclei okay that means this is a septate hyphae a septate hyphae means it does not have the presence of any cross wall or any partition in the hyphae but if you look at this hyphae we can see there is many uh, partition or cross wall in between them so there is a condition there will be a, a, a condition where in a cell more than two nuclei or a single nuclei or only two nuclei can be found so we can classify the hyphae on the basis of the presence and absence of their cross wall or partition wall the partition wall is known as septa they can be classified into septate and a septate form now i have enlarged a single mycelium of a fungi if we look this diagram is to understand understand the structures and understand uh, understand the thread like mycelium so from this diagram we can say that it is a septate hyphae Septate hyphae means there is certain cross walls in between the uh, hypha and there is a spore producing uh, organ, spore producing part which we will be discussing it uh, later. There are certain structures. Okay. So. Septa. Septa can also be classified Sept in in septate hyphae there may be a condition there are three cases uh, in a septate hyphae uh, first condition is that a septate hyphae means a septa will be formed without or a complete septa will be formed without any pores in between the septa it means if this is a septa and we can it is a septa divides a hyphae into two cells so in this two cells or in this partition there will be no pore there will be no pore in between these two partitions such partitions are known as complete septa and the septa with a single pore single pore means this is a septate hyphae in a septate hyphae you can see a central small pore inside it this is known as a septa with a central spore and also there is a condition which is known as septa with a dolipore what is a dolipore dolipore is a condition when which the partition wall will be becoming a barrel shaped uh, structure barrel shaped structure it means that it will be forming like this a barrel shaped structure will be formed this type of condition is known as dolipore structure dolipore septa so septa also can be classified on the basis into three it is known as complete septum uh, and septum with single pore and septum with dolipore i hope 
you are writing the notes with me it is necessary to note it down into a piece of paper these are the points to be remembered and also there is a point why what is the need of septa in between two cells septa allows the quick transportation of minerals quick transportation of nutrients uh, from a region of absorption to a region of uh, utilization or uh, to a region of reproductive use these are the conditions these are the things to be remembered dolly pore what is a dolly pore septa what is a, a normal septum single spore septum and without a uh, without a pore okay and there is three point uh, three uh, examples to be remembered in case of the aseptate hyphae aseptate hyphae uh, rhizopus salbigo and phytophthora these are the organism which have an aseptate condition and if you have heard a disease albigo which is caused by albigo candida albigo candida albigo candida is a fun fungal organism which causes the white rust disease white rust white rust disease is a disease which are found in usually solanaceae family um, which causes certain white color pustules white color pustules in the leaf of the plant these are the certain symptoms which is caused by the albigo candidis so these are the things to be remembered please correct the scientific name which i mentioned it earlier next is we are we are going to discuss something about the vegetative structure or vegetative structure of the mycelium mycelium the fung fungal hyphae the fungal hyphae can exist in different forms it is not necessary that it can be existed as existed as a exist as a single a normal mycelium just the thing which we have drawn earlier it can exist in several different forms as you know that i have drawn a structure of mushroom in the first part of the lecture so that structure of a mushroom is the spore producing organ spore producing part of the mycelium in which most part of the mycelium is seen on the surface from the surface a mushroom is grown so like mushroom structures certain other structures also exist fungi also show, show some certain different structures uh, of the structures some of the structures which are necessary in your higher secondary are drawn here first one is the plectin chyma plectin chyma is a type of mycelium it is a type of fungal hyphae in which the hyphae are seen lying parallel to each other loosely arranged hyphae which are seen parallel to each other it is loosely arranged it is not in a compact or it is not in a thick form a hyphae is seen uh, parallel lying parallel to each one another like this it will be forming a web like structure such structures are known as the plectin chyma uh, prosenchyma plectin chyma is divided into two prosenchyma and pseudoparenchyma next is the pseudoparenchyma from the terminology we can understand what are parenchyma cells which are found in the higher plants the cells which are found in the higher plants so pseudoparenchyma means it is like parenchyma pseudo means false parenchyma which are which are more similar to the which are like the parenchyma cells of the higher plants so fungi also shows certain structures which are similar to the prosenchyma parenchyma of the plant cells they are known as pseudon pseudo parenchyma hyphae may be loosely packed individual hyphae cannot be identified identified because they have been interwoven together to form a thick compact or a thick uh, structure which in which each hyphae cannot be identified each cannot each hyphae individual hyphae cannot be distinguished 
but in pros and chyma we we were easily we can easily identify each of the mycelium where mycelium is going but in case of pseudo parenchyma we can't identify the we can't identify the different individual hyphae similar to that of parenchyma of the higher plants the next important structure of fungi is that sclerotium sclerotium is a compact thick tissue which is formed by fungi in their resting stage what do you mean by resting stage of fungi if the climatic condition i earlier mentioned in the first part of the lecture that fungi needs certain favorable climatic condition to grow 20 to 30 degree celsius in an acidic ph and a warm and a humid climate if these structures if these conditions are not favorable if these conditions are not available for a fungi to grow they will be turning into a resting stage and waiting for the favorable condition waiting for a suitable favorable condition till for that waiting they will be turning into a structure which is known as sclerotium when the mycelium get interwoven to form a thick compact tissue so it, it that thick compact tissue contains the nourishment or the nutrition and it is waiting for a favorable climatic condition next structure is known as rhizomorph rhizomorphs rhizomorph are the vegetative structures which are used for absorption process they are like the roots of the plants rhizo means root root from the terminology we can understand they are root like structures they are interwoven high phase structure they are cord like structures which are seen they are vertically arranged like this they are parallel to each other and they are lying in the surface of the substratum and they are used for the purpose of absorption apart from these vegetative structure there are many other structures which are used by the fungi for their vegetative purpose or reproductive purpose we are here mentioning the vegetative purpose good example is apresorium haustorium these are some of the vegetative other vegetative structure which are produced by fungi produced in the means they are turning themselves into their structures haustorium are the structures which are used to absorb apresorium which are the structures which are used to adhere adhere to some of the substratum to stick to the some of the substratum so these are the main three important vegetative structure which are formed by the fungi and it should be remembered it should be in your memory we will be once more classifying hyphae fungal hyphae on the basis of their formation of a reproductive structure if a fungal hyphae the entire fungal hyphae turn into a reproductive structure we know that a fungal hyphae is known as mycelium a group of hyphae is known as mycelium the unit structure is known as hyphae if in a if the entire hyphae turn into a reproductive structure then it is known as holocarpic holo holocarpic uh, fungi if a fungi is mycelium the entire mycelium turn into a reproductive structure then it is known as holocarpic fungi but in some in some fungi in some cases only a certain portion of the fungi turn into their reproductive structure this type of fungi are known as eucarpic fungi so we know that a fungal in a fun, fungal hyphae there may be there can be two structure right a vegetative structure a somatic structure which is used for a vegetative purpose and also a reproductive structure which are used to produce gametes and the uh, reproductive structure which are used to receive gametes and also to produce their spores or gametes 
it is according to their reproductive structure we know that fungi reproduce by three method sexual asexual and vegetative reproduction but in case of human beings we can only reproduce by sexual reproduction right in some other organism they are reproduced by asexual methods we know what is the difference between asexual and sexual method in a in a asexual method only a single parent is needed right but in asexual method two parents are required two parents with different genetic percentage or different parentage two different parentage are required for a sexual reproduction in asexual reproduction only one parent is required in a, in asexual reproduction the offsprings which are formed will be similar to that of the parents in case of sexual reproduction there will be some genetic changes there will be combination of the both the parents and dissimilar copies may be formed in case of asexual reproduction not exactly the same but different copy or different genetic parentage can genetic percentage can be seen in the sexual reproduction of springs so i told that in fungi we can divide the fungi into holocarpic and eucarpic fungi in case of eucarpic fungi if the entire mycelium if in in eucarpic fungi if uh, what is eucarpic fungi a fungi which can turn only a certain portion of their hypha into reproductive structure if in that hypha in that reproductive structure only one sporangium is formed then it is known as monocentric monocentric eucarpic fungi what is monocentric only one sporangium what is one sporangium sporangium is a reproductive structure we will be discussing this reproductive structure in the coming lecture very soon because this is the end of the reprodu- uh, this is the end of fungi thal- thalus structure from the next after this we will be discussing about veg- uh, the reproduction in fungi very soon so eucarpic fungi can be divided into two monocentric and polycentric monocentric means a single sporangium is formed only a single reproductive structure is formed in case of polycentric fungi multiple sporangium is formed it means multiple reproductive structure can be seen in a single single hyphae that single hyphae in that single hyphae we can see a reproductive structure also a vegetative structure also in the in that vegetative structure or in that reproductive structure we can see different type of different number of sporangium different reproductive structure in number so and also there is a terminology which is uh, which is we call some fungi as dimorphic fungi what are dimorphic fungi the fungi which in their two stages of their development in first stage of development they may be seen as a single cell but in later later stage they can be seen as a multicellular fungi so a fungi which can exist in two different cellular forms these forms are known as this fungi these types of fungi are known as dimorphic fungi dimorphic means two morphism two morphs it means two structures next hyphal wall fung fungi's hyphal wall consist of mainly three uh, mainly two types of materials which in which the fun, fun, fungal wall is made fungal hyphae is made we know that fungal cell wall is made up of chitin right in fungal hyphal wall we can say that most of the percentage is fungal cellulose fungal cellulose contains also have a small proportion of chitin chitin have mainly three major proportion of carbon nitrogen and hydrogen present in it what are chitins chitin is a compound which can which is a polymer of n acetyl glucosamine it means polymer means it is a mm, it contains many monomer of n acetyl glucosamine okay and in acetyl glucosamine there is a many many n acetyl glucosamine join together to form a polymer chitin these are the important things to be remembered in the thallus structure the fungi thallus structure 
ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് വി വിൽ ബി ഡിസ്കസിങ് അബൌട്ട് ദ വെജിറ്റേറ്റീവ് സ്ട്രക്ചർ സോറി ദ വെജിറ്റ് ദ റീപ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഇൻ ഫഞ്ചൈ ഹൗ ഫഞ്ചൈ റീപ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ഐ ഏർലിയർ മെൻഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഫഞ്ചൈ ക്യാൻ റീപ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ഇൻ ത്രീ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് മെത്തേഡ്സ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് വി വിൽ ബി ഡിസ്കസിങ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് ഫഞ്ചൈ ദ ക്ലാസിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഫഞ്ചൈ എവരി തിങ് ഐ ആം ഡിസ്കസിങ് ഹിയർ ഇസ് സ്ട്രിക്ട്ലി ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ എൻ സി ആർ ടി ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബുക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫോർ ദ നീറ്റ് ആസ്പിരൻറ്റ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് so the classes will be taken according to it so the students which are aspiring for neat should remember each and every point like the examples the date the names so next we will be discussing about the which uh, reproduct reproduction in fungi